what is up guys and i'm sorry for not uploading last week i decided to pick up an extra shift at work yeah weddings are they're not cheap dude oh my god that windshield jesus i wanted to talk about something that's coming out of canada it was a theater they want to do something for black history month where the only audience members that could show up are like their black identifying people i don't know what, what the hell that means at all it doesn't make any sense. I just came into this realization of well, why do we keep talking about this? Why? These people are just deranged attention seeking retards. That's the only that's the only thing I could cultivate it as. They're attention seeking because they get off on people getting upset. What did Seth Rogen say when Santa Inc. like the trailer dropped and everyone said it was trash? Well, we we pissed off a lot of alt-right Nazis or something to that effect. And these people get off on the activism. They don't care about the art. They don't care about the audience. They don't care about the integrity. They go around in circles. They, they, they circle jerk what their friends in Hollywood try to outwoke each other. That's exactly what they do. And they do it all the time. Like, you, do, do you really care that Mindy Kaling is getting so much hate online? She already got, HBO Max already paid her, and then they are covering the fence for the garbage that she made, everyone that produced it. And the biggest travesty is that how, Glenn Howerton was in that show, and I don't know how you said yes, bro. Please, just, just stick to Sunny, bro. And one of the scary things that, I've been seeing and, and like I've heard one story I believe on a podcast is that someone uh, knew someone that was in film school or it was like a super chat of someone in film school and they said that no one talks about the set design they don't talk about the art they don't talk about costumes it's just about how diverse that their student film is going to be you 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 do not see or feel any passion in any movie or tv show anymore I, that's why netflix is crashing people think it's going to be the password sharing thing that's going to kill them i think they died a long time ago because they would have a show that'd be like a good one or two seasons and you'll get really invested into it they cancel it immediately and they kept doing that over and over and over again and it's like okay why should i get attached to any project if you're just going to kill it two seasons in american vandal genius show hilarious first season was great uh second season was actually really pretty good and i was waiting for a third one and it went super super viral canceled after a week after the the premiere it's like why every single time and then they green light stuff like big mouth that i don't know i see some people like it but a lot, there's mo either that someone really likes it or they're really disgusted by it i'm one of the disgusted people but they keep churning out garbage over and over and over again and now people are just tuning out they're just like i'm done i don't care anymore i've been there a long time ago last marvel movie i saw was spider-man no way for home that was over a year ago i just do not care at all i'm just done because they don't respect me. They don't respect you. They care way more about their activism. One of my hobbies is that I love to go through some of my favorite movies and television shows. And I like to see the behind the scenes. I like to look behind the curtain. That's like the magician part of me. I sit down. I'll put on like a Blu-ray or like a behind the scenes from like YouTube. And I'll just watch hours upon hours of how they did the set designs, where they shot it, what the actors were thinking, the stunt choreography, how the CGI was done. And I, j I just love that stuff because it's so, you see the behind the scenes of a movie because you people think of like what the actors, uh, when they think of Iron Man, they think of John Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. It literally takes hundreds, if not thousands of people to make a single movie. It adds so much to the economy and it gives so many people jobs. And so many people don't get respect like the uh, stunt doubles or the people who slave away on the computers doing the CGI. I sat down and I watched like a 24 minute video of Vince Gilligan and the cast and crew breaking down how they filmed and designed Gus's death scene. And if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, first of all, bro, where have you been? It's been nearly a decade. It's been off air. Dude, watch it now and then watch Better Call Saul directly after because that show even is better than that one. And I'll talk about that right after. Now, back to my 
other rant. So I was watching them break down Gus's death scene, and it's like 24 minutes of them going through excruciating detail for a scene that would be on screen for probably five or six, seven seconds. And they showed, they went through, they went to the basis. They took a picture of actor's face, the guy who plays Gus. They took his face. They photoshopped half of it with like meat and skulls. There's different designs. And then they took a bust and they made a bust of his head and they designed that and they did that. And then they put the makeup on his face. It took like four hours. They had to get some hydraulics onto a door and they had to blow the door off. Dude, it was just insane. And then the actor had to go out and just walk out into a room and drop to the floor 19 times in a row. And Vince Gilligan didn't know how it was going to go. It was actually, and he wanted to make it look like it was one continuous shot, but it's actually two different shots composited over each other. And then they had to, you just see how much effort and dedication it goes for a, a scene that barely lasts for 10 seconds. But with all that dedication and all that passion put into the five seconds that's going to be on screen and hours upon hours of set design, the mechanics of all that machinery, that leaves an impression in all the audience's mind because everyone knows that scene. It is one of the most iconic scenes in television history. And it's not because, oh, it was cool. Oh, it was something different. No, you, there was a group of people that were passionate enough and cared about the audience. It shows how much passion and dedication that they have to you, the fans, what they're willing to do just to give you some of the best television of all time. And it wasn't like, oh, like look at this crazy effect. Look at this cool thing. It kind of just happens and they move on. And I think people don't really appreciate the level. I think people do, but it's not as appreciative as it was before. Like I said, another show that's in the exact same universe, Better Call Saul. It's a show that could have been easily just lazy. They could have done absolutely nothing with the show. It could have just been Breaking Bad 2, cameos here and there. The show was actually pitched as a 30-minute comedy uh, that it was just Saul Goodman going in and doing different cases every episode. It was supposed to be like 30 minutes. It was supposed to be like this little throwaway thing. But Vince Gilligan said, no, I wanted to attach it to the actual main universe. And so the show, I think to quote him, is that it's 85% drama and 15% comedy. And he wanted to actually tie into everything. And I hear so many people say that they love Breaking Bad. Oh my God, Breaking Bad is one of my favorite shows. Then I'll ask them, have you seen Better Call Saul? They say, no, I never really cared about that character or, or the lawyer. I think it's more that people are apprehensive because Breaking Bad is the top ech echelon of just television. And if you'd make anything on the outside of that, it's probably going to be terrible or not as good or even close. In my opinion, Better Call Saul actually surpasses Breaking Bad because they jumped over the hurdle of being one, a prequel, coming off the heels of the biggest show of all time, and also making it surprising, engaging, and giving satisfying uh, character arcs. You don't see any more grit or complexity in cinema or television nowadays. It's just, okay, here's the good guy. Here's the bad guy. Okay, they fight good guy ones every single time. And it's never really a complex issue on like the morality of something or the the implication of what that can do with the cause and effect. It's just, oh no, this person's bad, this person's good. And for some reason in television and movies, it's the straight white male every single time. But in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, they make it way more complex that it's everybody has something good or something insanely shitty about them. And it just makes it such an interesting show. And you do not get the level of detail and passion from anyone in Hollywood anymore. It's just, oh, okay, I I was given this Marvel script. I'll do this, this, and this. I don't. I didn't read the comic books. And yeah, if you don't watch it, uh, we made the whole thing diverse. If you don't watch it, you're a racist. It's just, um, I just can't. I just can't anymore, dude. I, I would say just strip. Uh, the whole point of this video is basically just strip these people of their legitimacy. Just stop watching. Don't. Uh, that, just, baby. Mm. Baby, I eat this shit from right out.
dedicated to all the pretty. Just not, not just stop watching Velma. Just don't even talk about it. These people get off on the attention. They go, oh, the, the Velma's trending. They, they don't see, they don't care if Velma's trending, if it's good or if it's bad. If Velma is good and it's trending, oh, it's good. We might get a second season. It doesn't, okay, it's cool. Uh, if it's trending and people talking how terrible it is, oh my God, they're all racist, white supremacists, misogynist Nazis, and basically them being upset is why why we're doing this. We're trying to push back against uh, racist culture, and it's just they find it as a win win. But when they get the attention, that's all they care about. That's all that matters to them. They much rather have everyone know their name instead of making money like eric july says it's much better to have a small pool of dedicated people that will give you money ex except everyone knowing your name and then having a really big flaky audience that won't even buy from you that that's really my rant guys i just wanted to get that out there why it just we are just sick talking about it over and over and over again I just don't want to give these people legitimacy anymore. I want to go out and I want to make short films. I want to see more independent films. Tim Pool making it on Billboard. Uh, Eric July backwards. They're going on. They were on like the top charts, like top metal charts a few years ago. Uh, uh, Tom McDonald. He's going on on Billboard, I believe, also. And these people are no longer mainstream culture they're not mainstream at all they're legacy they're legacy media that's what they are they used to have a legacy not anymore no one's watching cnn tim pool has already surpassed them these people pumping millions upon millions of dollars into these institutions that nobody watches how many people actually watch cnn and no one believes them and i believe most of our viewership uh airports and hotels because every time i walk into either one of those two CNN on the screen all the time and Jim's also too, which is really weird, but yeah, guys, I, that's really it. That's my rant over. I just glad I got that out there, but please watch better call Saul. And if you have not watched breaking bad, please do that too. And also throw El Camino in there. It's actually a pretty good movie. Just kind of six year old DLC that didn't really need to happen. But other than that, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.